So the rhythm of the heartbeat is controlled by electrical signals, and these are very similar to the same sort of signals that control the switching on of the lights or the TV or the radio in our houses. So they work very quickly, and it involves the passage of electrically charged ions. And in the heart, in the case of the heart, they're carried by proteins called ion channels. So these are channels that exist in the membrane of every single cell, and they allow the passage of the electrical signal very quickly to go from one cell to the next cell. It's very important to understand how these electrical signals work and why, and, and the precise coordination of the timing of these electrical signals, because if these electrical signals that coordinate the contraction of the heart aren't regulated properly or don't work properly, then the heart won't beat properly, and typically you'll develop what's called a cardiac arrhythmia. And cardiac arrhythmias are probably the commonest action, or the commonest mode of death in Western societies. So probably somewhere in the order of 10 to 15% of the population will die as a result of abnormalities of the electrical signals in the heart, as what's often referred to as sudden cardiac death. What we've been studying are these ion channel proteins and how they work to regulate these electrical signals. So they're called channels because they are just that. They're literally holes in the membrane that go through these special proteins to allow the ions to go in and out from the outside to the inside of the cell. But they're not open all the time. Obviously, to be able to create signals, you've got to be able to shut them off and open them up at very precise times. And so what we've been studying is the process by which these channels open and close to allow the ions in and out of the cell. Precise coordination and the regulation of every single ion channel in the heart is critical for maintaining the normal rhythm. And interfering with it, just one of them can actually have catastrophic consequences. Back in the 1970s, a lot of people were very interested in trying to develop drugs that by blocking ion channels or regulating the activity of ion channels might help to prevent the development of cardiac arrhythmias. We now appreciate that almost all of these drugs achieve that effect by blocking the human ether agogo related gene potassium channel. But it turns out it doesn't reduce the risk of arrhythmias, it actually greatly increases the risk of arrhythmias. But we only really knew about this problem, or first found out about this problem, in about 1996 when they discovered this channel. It was only once we discovered the channel and worked out the mechanism that people really started to look at this much more closely. Now as a consequence of that, there have been nine drugs that have been withdrawn from the market as a consequence of the fact that because they can bind to this channel, they can cause arrhythmias and the risk of them doing so is too high relative to the benefits of taking these drugs. And it affects every range of compound of drugs, whether it be antibiotics, antipsychotics, antihistamines, every type of compound can potentially affect this channel. So they have to work out what the benefit of taking the drug is versus the risk that this drug might cause this nasty side effect and potentially kill the patient. Mm. So obviously if it's something like an antihistamine that you take for hay fever, then if there's any, even the most slightest remote risk of causing this side effect, you're not going to license the drug because the benefits of treating the hay fever okay, it's unpleasant to have hay fever, but it's not going to kill you. But if it's an, a chemotherapeutic agent or a very potent antibiotic that's required to treat very nasty infections, then they might license the drug, but with a warning saying, whenever you use this drug, make sure you monitor the ECG of the patients and the cardiac status of the patients to make sure that you're not getting this side effect. The group of compounds where this problem is most that we have to deal with most commonly is in the area of antipsychotics. So these are the drugs that are used to treat patients who have severe psychiatric illnesses like schizophrenia and um, some of the major depression syndromes. And the reason it's a big problem there is that these patients have to take these drugs every day of their life for decades. It's not as though they just take the drug once or twice. They're taking this drug many uh, every day of their life. And if, for whatever reason, they still they either take a few too many drugs or their metabolism of the drug decreases at a certain period of time because they've got some other illness and they accumulate slightly higher doses of the drugs and they become particularly at risk of developing this side effect. So it's been estimated that patients with schizophrenia taking antipsychotic medication are probably about a threefold increased or up to a threefold increased risk of developing acute sudden cardiac death as a direct result of the drug binding this channel 
which is a completely unintended side effect relative to its effectiveness as treating the schizophrenia. So you can think of it as a simple channel, as a sort of like a tube that passes from one side of the inside of the cell to the outside of the cell, mm -hmm. and it's got a sort of lid on the top. Mm -hmm. And traditionally people thought of these gates as literally being just like a gate or a, a door in a house that can sort of open and close to allow the ions to go through. Mm -hmm. But what we've actually shown is that it's not a simple linear communication pathway, and that in fact the opening and closing of the channel, and in particular the what we refer to as the upper gate in the channel, the particular channel that we've studied, which is called the HERG or the human ether agogo related gene potassium channel, is a bit more analogous to the opening and closing of the Japanese puzzle box. To be able to open the box, it's not simply a matter of lifting the lid. You have to move different components of the box, which are all interrelated, and so one part of it can't move unless the previous bit has already moved before it. And the opening of the channel gates in the iron channel is a very similar process. In the long term, from patients' point of view, by better understanding this channel in particular, what we hope to be able to achieve is to be able to design drugs in such a way that we can minimise the risk that these drugs will bind to this channel and therefore minimise the risk that patients will be taking medications that could have the side effect of causing acute cardiac arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death. And obviously that's very important. You don't want patients who are sick and worried about their other health issues also having to worry about having sudden cardiac death as a side effect. So if we can eliminate that risk, it would be of great benefit to the patients.